Hello, today I am going to explain you about convolution code, uh, designing of the convolution code encoder and how to obtain the output code word when the input data sequence is given. Convolution code is a type of forward error correcting code like the linear block code which we have seen earlier. Linear block code, in linear block code, the output depends on the present k bit block of data. However, in convolution code, the output depends not only on the present k bits at the input of the encoder, but it also depends upon m previous bits. Here, small m is equal to number of memory elements in the encoder, or we can also say that number of previous bits that affect the present output. Convolution code is represented by n, k, m where small n is equal to number of bits available at the output of the encoder at a time, k is number of bits presented at the input of the encoder at a time and m is number of memory elements or number of previous bits affecting the output. For example, if we have to design a convolution code encoder for 3, 1, 2, we can say that number of outputs in this encoder is equal to 3, number of uh, inputs at the encoder is equal to uh, 1 and number of uh, previous bits affecting the output is equal to 2. Convolution code uh, we have to now let us take an example where we have to design a convolution code encoder with shift registers having two stages and there are two, three modulo 2 adders that means there are three outputs. Generators are also given G1, G2 and G3 are the generator. We have to draw the block diagram of the encoder, obtain the code word length and also obtain the code word for the given input data sequence. To calculate the code word length of the convolution code, this is the formula which is equal to n into L plus m. Here n is equal to number of outputs available at a time, capital L is equal to length of the input data sequence and small m as earlier mentioned is number of memory elements or number of previous bits affecting the output. For example, for our example, for the given example, uh, small n is equal to 3 because there are 3 outputs. Capital L is equal to 5 which is the length of the input data sequence and number of memory elements or number of stages in the shift register small m is equal to 2. So for our example, when we obtain the code word at the output, we will see that the length of the code word is equal to 21 bits. Now let me tell you what is constraint length. Constraint length is capital M which is denoted by capital M is number of clocks for which one bit affects the output. For the given example, the input, of input bit, one bit at the input, it affects the output for three clock pulses. Therefore, we can say that constraint length which is equal to capital M is equal to three. Now how many number of zeros do we need to append to the input sequence before encoding the input sequence? We need to append capital M minus 1 zeros to the input sequence. So if there are 5, uh, if uh, in the given example as we have already seen that capital M is equal to 3, we append M minus 1 which is equal to 2 zeros to the input sequence. Capital M, I will repeat once again, is the constraint length. There is another way to find out the number of zeros to be appended to the input sequence. Uh, we can say that we can append m zeros, where small m zeros. So here small m is number of me memory elements or number of previous bits that affect the output. So we append small m which is equal to 2 in our given example to the input sequence. 
So before encoding, we have to make sure that we have appended appropriate number of zeros to the input sequence. Otherwise, the code word that we up obtain at the output will be incomplete or it will not be correct. So we have to design the encoder for the given generators G1, G2 and G3. This is the design of the encoder. As mentioned in the problem, we have got two shift registers, uh, two stages in the shift register S1 and S2. We have to make three modulo 2 adders 1, 2 and 3. Output of the modulo 2 adders are V1, V2 and V3. And we have one multiplexer at the output. So this switch acts as the multiplexer which will multiplex all the three outputs at a time and it will form the code word sequence code word output code word sequence now what is, what will be the output of modulo 2 adders v1 v2 and v3 so v1 v2 and v3 v1 will be equal to data xor s2 why it will be equal to data xor s2 because our generator 1 g1 is equal to 101 this means this one stands for this link here link of input connected to modulo 2 adder 1 okay the 0 means output of s1 is not connected to modulo 2 adder 1 and this one means output of s2 is connected to modulo 2 adder 1 so v1 will be equal to data xor s2 that means output of s1 is not connected to the modulo 2 adder 1 v2 will be equal to data xor s1 let us see why 2 modulo 2 adder second modulo 2 adder we are connecting input and we are connecting s1 because the generator is 110 this 0 stands for output of s2 because s2 output of S2 is not connected to modulo 2 adder 2 we this is this link is not present and for modulo 2 adder 3 output V3 is equal to input XOR S1 XOR S2 so all the three connections are established because G1 is equal to 111 so link of input connected to this modulo 2 adder S1 connected to this modulo 2 adder and S2 connected to this modulo 2 adder all the three links are present so V3 is equal to 1 1 1 or V3 is equal to data XOR S1 XOR S2 now based on these three equations of V1 V2 and V3 we will find the output code word output ok so first in the data column you list the data sequence don't forget to list the uh, appended zeros also last two zeros are the appended zeros then in the first clock when the first clock arrives your s1 and s2 will be 0 0 because shift register inputs will be reset so this first two bits will be as a first for the first iteration first clock s1 and s2 will be equal to 0 and 0 now what is v1 v1 is data xor s2 so what is data in the first clock data is equal to 1 s2 is equal to 0 so 1 xor 0 is equal to 1 so v1 for the first clock is equal to 1 what is v2 v2 is data xor s1 so data is 1 s1 is 0 1 xor 0 is equal to 1 so v2 is equal to 1 and v3 is equal to data xor s1 xor s2 so v3 is equal to 1 xor 0 xor 0 so v3 is equal to 1 when the next clock arrives data is shifted to s1 and s1 is shifted to s2 because it is a shift register now according to new data s1 and s2 we again need to find out what is v1 v2 and v3 and this goes on so at every clock we shift the data to s1 and s1 to s2 
and obtain the corresponding V1, V2 and V3. Multiplexer switch will take the output of V1, V2 and V3 in one clock cycle and it will present at the output. So for every clock V1, V2 and V3 will be obtained. So the final sequence will be obtained by taking V1, V2 and V3 for every clock cycles. So we find or we get or we obtain the final code word. If you count the number of bits in the final code word, it is equal to 21, which is the code word length which we had earlier obtained. So in this video, we saw how to design a convolution code encoder and how to obtain the code word for the given data sequence. In the next video, uh, I will explain you one more example on the convolution code encoder and then we will see how to draw the state diagram for the given convolution code encoder. Thank you very much for listening.